What's up everybody? Patrick from WP Builder Helper and today we have a very exciting video for you. Brizzy has launched its official beta. Um, it's beta into what it's coming up. It's it's had plugins in the works and so we've got the beta plugins. We're part of the beta thing. We like to look at it and see what's going on and I'm very excited because this plugin is going to finally bring Brizzy to the level of where I believe it needs to be. Um, it, it's got some things that it still needs to work on, but I think overall this is going to be a great addition to Brizzy. It's going to finally bring it and step it up into that realm where it goes from being kind of like in development limbo to where it's come out of that and now it's ready to go. Like it's ready to roll. We've got block conditions. We've got mega menus. We've got global elements that don't require janky like back-end stuff. I think that once... I think the only thing missing from my perspective is their dynamic stuff. They're, they're not really talking about that, although I watched a preview and they said that that is on the flow. But let's jump into this. Let's see what they got. Let's see what's new. I was already playing with this a little bit earlier, but I wanted to take and go into it and show you guys. So let's, let's build a couple pages and I will show you exactly what's going on with Brizzy. We're going to set it as the default Brizzy template. I think it does it by default and then click publish okay then we're gonna go into the Brizzy editor just like you would and if you're and you can already see one block is in here so let's delete this one and I'll show you what this is so one of the things that we've struggled with if you've been a long time Brizzy fan or someone who's been playing with Brizzy or you just like Brizzy or whatever the case is is the headers and footers they've just been global elements and so if you wanted to build a header and footer you would have to set it as a global element and while it worked it, it just wasn't my favorite you had to do it for each and every page and that is so annoying like that's not something that a designer wants to take and deal with and so they've now added the fact that you have some options so I'm gonna let's let's fix this up let's get this looking right and let's see that's weird. It's a weird little error there. So that's obviously an error because it won't let me select the menu tab. Well, that's fine. We can let's do this. Let's select another header. That's obviously a little issue on their part. I had used this one earlier and this one worked. So obviously this was too close to that. We could have fixed that, but I just didn't feel like doing it. So we're going to select our menus. We just got some basic links here. Nothing that's extreme so this is all the same this isn't anything different from what you've seen these are all the same links and everything but where the difference comes in is you can now set it to a global well you could set it to a global before and you'll say okay well we used to set it to a global but now once you've set it to a global you'll see it's kind of saving and in the background once it saves you can go in here and you have display conditions and look at this you've got includes this was kind of what i've been looking for this whole entire time um, the fact that they're adding this in is just really, really great. And it even allows you to go and customize it to the point where you can only put it on certain pages. So that's great for people who want maybe one menu on one page and a different menu on another page. It's cool. You can, and you're doing this all within the page. So you're building this. It's got a different feel to it than Elementor. Elementor grows with templates. And so you build everything as a template. Oxygen builds everything as a main. And then you put the inner contents and everything like that. And that's how you build it. So let's hit save. And let's save it. And then from here, what will happen is after we've saved it, uh, did it save it? Yeah, it looks like it did. It just didn't close it out. So after we've saved it, this is going to be a global block. So if we go back, let's update the page. And let's go back into WordPress. Let's go back into our dashboard. Okay. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually make another page. And we'll just call this page, I don't know, let's call it About Us. So it's like an About Us page. And we're going to select... Brizzy template. Now remember this, the Brizzy stuff only works on Brizzy templates. So if you do not use the Brizzy template, your headers and footers will not show up. Only shows up on Brizzy templates. That's a very important factor about all of this. So remember that when you're building this. 
So then from here, we'll go with uh, Publish. Let's hit Publish. And then go with Edit from Brizzy. Edit with Brizzy. And then we should see our header that is in here. And yes, it's done it twice because I had already saved one global header, so now it's showing up twice. So that's why it's showing up on the page, which we'll have to go back and fix that. But no big deal. That The point being... You can now see the headers and footers work the way they're supposed to. They're not global elements that you have to go in and edit the global. I mean, it's it was just annoying. It was so annoying to go through that. Let's go fix that global elements. Is that in templates? No, this is one that I was playing with. This is actually for... So it turns out templates in Brizzy work exactly like they should. They're actual templates they're not like elementor where you dump everything into your templates file and then it pulls those parts for the headers and the footers and things like that the brizzy templates are strictly four page templates so we can go in here and let's go back to the home let's go to edit with brizzy and i will show you some of the new features we're going to go over some of the new features that they've got so a lot of the new features are mainly related to, obviously we've got footers and everything like that, but they're mainly related to the to stuff that they've added. So Brizzy has added a bunch of useful uh, things to their, they, they've updated their forms. If you were a person who used their forms, and this is, this is, possibly an old thing I don't I don't remember but I haven't seen this in a while they've updated their forms so that now they've got way more integration and I know this came out a while ago but finally you've got the ability to add all these different things in and that's just really great to see you've got recapture in there you've got all this I would like to see where you can do multi-step forms if they ever come out with that maybe that's later on down the road but that would be cool. It'd be neat to see things like date and time. And I think that they have that. I could be wrong. Um, but that wasn't even part of the new thing. I just noticed that when I came in here. So let's add some new stuff that they've actually put. So part of the new stuff that they've actually put in here is they've added a Lottie. Which is, let's delete this out the way. Lottie is just an animation. Um, that's all it is. And it's an animation from this company right here. And you have to kind of register to get there. And there's some cool stuff that's in here. Um, I feel like Lotties are... So there's a bunch of reasons why you want to use a Lottie. I was researching this because I didn't actually know what the Lottie was. I kind of know what it is now. And I think it's cool. It's a smoother animation. It's it's a bunch of stuff that you can take and you can do with your animations. But at the same time, it's it's somewhat, I don't know. I feel like Lotties are like the new GIFs. And they are the new GIFs. I mean, that's what they're made for. But you can use this. And this is great that they have all these animations. And you can make your site more interactive. And you can make it more fun. But I feel like these can be overused. And so I would say err on the side of caution. Maybe don't go um, don't go ham on these. Uh, I just... I don't know. Lottie files, they're interesting. But I feel like they have the... They, they can be overused. And any animation on a website can be overused. And you have to use them sparingly. Because the more that you put a bunch of Lotties on there the easier it's going to be for someone to just zone out because it's just going to be too much for them to focus on. So I think this is awesome and I think it can be used uh, strategically to kind of prove your point and kind of show off your product or show off what you're doing or whatever it is. I think there's a lot that can be done with these, but I think you got to use them sparingly. So Lotties just allow you to basically add some functionality, some animation on there. Not really functionality, I should say, but, you know, just something fun to add to the page so that the user's not just staring at something that's blank, that's boring. So that's all Lottie is. So what else have they added? Let's see what else they've added. Let's get this out the way. Um, let's get this out the way, too. So... Another thing that they've added is they've finally added a login. So if you've ever wanted a WordPress login, and I hate the spacing on this. Let's add some padding just so you can see it. You can finally have a login, and it goes a little bit further than that. So you don't just have to have 
a login for that. You can have you can have um, different types of logins. So you've got some positioning that you well that's that's not new. You've got some some register. You've got forgot password if you want to do forgot password. So you've got some login factors. So it's almost they're almost allowing you to take and build your site completely without having to worry about using third-party plugins. And I think anything that adds in functionality where you don't have to use a third-party plugin is a plus for me. I enjoy the fact that they're doing that. You've also got some features in here that they didn't talk about, but there's a, a line right and a line left. So now you can align this the way you want to. If you want this all on this side, well, you can do it like that. You can also lock it now where you can it can stay in that position so that you don't have to worry about it disappearing, which is nice as you're, as you're designing. And as you're clicking on things, it'll take and it'll open up more functions. If that thing that you're clicking on, you know, has something that doesn't, that has more settings, if that makes sense. So the more stuff you click on, it'll kind of let you know, Hey, this thing has a setting here. And so you can do it. Otherwise it'll just drop in the background and it'll go away just like it used to. So I think that's cool. That's a, that's a nice UI uh, feature there that kind of gives you a little bit more power over what you're doing. There's also, they've added, they've added so much in this newer update. They've got things that I haven't even seen. There's business hours in here, which I think is a little bit weird. I feel like you could have already done that, but I guess anything that makes your life a little bit easier, because there are a lot of businesses out there, and most businesses are the ones who are designing websites, anything that makes your life a little bit easier can be done, but I feel like this can also be done with one of their other new blocks that they had, which I think is cool. And their other new block that they added was the table block. Let me see if I can, so here it is, here's the table block. So this is really neat. Tables are for, so if you're somebody who's like me and you do a lot of affiliate marketing, tables are something that is very useful to somebody who's trying to take and serve information. Tables are shown by Google a lot. Google likes them. They kind of fell out of favor because a lot of people were using tables at one point to take and design things and then they got away from them and then people stopped using them because they were just ugly but now they've kind of come back in favor and now that you can kind of do all this stuff where you can add in little elements here so you can go in and you can add in elements you see icons and stuff this makes the tables more interactive and i love the fact that they've done this because the tables in gutenberg are absolutely horrid my only problem with this is let's see what they look like okay so these all look great on smaller let's see what they look like on mobile so yeah that's my issue and so you've got some padding you've got some stuff in here let's see why this table okay so you've got some spacing in here why is this table looking like this? And I'm sure there's something that's causing it. So when we look in here, we can see position. I'm sure it's probably one of these settings right here. Yep, so there it is. There's your width. And this is annoying too. This should be in percentage. You should be able to drop this in percentage. I'm not sure why that's not there. There's percentage in other places, but there's not percentage here. I would like to see percentage EMs those type of units of measurements because they make a difference and I'm not really sure why they did that. So you have to adjust that by pixels which is quite uh, annoying but at least it works. You know it's a small problem but it's something that works so that's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. And let's see what else we've got here because I know they've added more stuff. Let's just go here and add it here. So Another thing that they've added, I believe, is, oh, post navigation. Okay, so we finally have post navigation. That's real cool because I had tried doing this on Oxygen, and it's a rather pain-in-the-butt thing to get to work. You can get it to work. It's not that it can't work. It just requires a bit of coding and customization to get it to work because you got to use some some WordPress short codes and then customizing it is a bit of a pain in the butt. I mean, this is 
this is pretty cool that they added this in and it looks like you can do dynamic content so you can add in categories choose post and other things like that and there's some options in here for separation and spacing you can show just the title just the post I like that that's really cool so it gives you some you can remove the separator that's neat I like that I like the fact that it allows that it allows you to customize that and obviously you can change all the different colors and everything like that to make it look like whatever you want so that's really cool and I think one of the last things and I may be skipping over some of the stuff because I don't remember it all this is a giant update but the last thing is we finally get mega menus yes mega menus finally one of the dreaded things for every other company in the world mega menus you can already do this on a lot of different places but the fact that they're finally bringing this in is to me super cool i like the fact that we finally have mega menus so mega menus all they really are in a nutshell is just a way for you to customize a menu itself give it some I don't know what you would call it give it some flavor give it some some whatever so that you can have an extra menu you can have a menu that just it pops out it gives the user more information when these are done right these are super helpful to someone who's looking for something on a page and they just pop out and they give you a little bit more information like maybe it gives you a few more links or whatever like I'm not sure if before you've seen but in a lot of the links there's you can do like drop down links where if you wanted a link it'll have an arrow and then it'll have a drop down and all these different links sometimes people want to describe links so maybe they want to use pictures or they want to use icons or they want to use something like that and that's kind of what the mega menu solves it's nice to have something where you can go in and you can drop in any element that you want so if you wanted like an audio file you can go in and drop an audio file and someone can listen to audio from soundcloud or whatever you want i mean the fact that you can do that kind of stuff is just really cool and then you can even customize it that's that's really neat too that's that's neat the way they do that so you can even customize it i mean that kind of stuff is just something that brings your website to the next level. It makes it pop. I am kind of curious, what does that look like on mobile? Um, okay, so it just kind of drops down. Obviously, the SoundCloud element does not show up, but you can disable it. But okay, that's okay. It still works. So point being, we're finally getting everything that we've been looking for. We're getting block conditions. I didn't, I was kind of curious, what happens if, so say I save this as a global. Does this get a block condition too? Can I have this show up? Oh, wow. So this can have display conditions too. Wow, that's neat. So you can have this only show up on certain pages or whatever. Like, for instance, if you only wanted this to, like, if you were building a membership site and you wanted to use WordPress default member stuff as your basic, as your basic background, well, you could take that and you could say, okay, well, I only want it on this page. And if that page was like a member page, you could set it as a member page, click save, and now all of a sudden that page only shows up on the privacy policy. That's on, on the member page that's really cool that's really neat let's update this and let's go to the privacy policy and see we haven't set this yet this is still in draft so let's set this as a breezy template and let's hit publish publish and let's hit edit with breezy and let's see what we've done. So interesting. So that block didn't show up though. I wonder why that block didn't show up. This block showed up. I wonder why that one didn't. That's interesting. Huh. You also don't seem to be able to delete the blocks, which is a bit weird. Maybe because it's on the page itself. So you can't go in and delete it if it's on the page, but that's that's strange. So obviously that didn't save. And you also get this. This is one of the neatest features too. 
So if you're connected to the Brizzy cloud, you can have your blocks and layouts set up in the cloud. This is a very, very unique feature that I think is going to push Brizzy to be more useful than a lot of other builders. Having stuff set in the cloud means that you can take and you can build your own entire library and save those blocks to the cloud, to Brizzy Cloud, as long as you have a Brizzy Cloud account. From which I understand, it's going to be very affordable. It's totally worth it. Those people who get on a lifetime license, you're going to get a better deal than people who get in later. So if you haven't gotten a chance to get a lifetime license, now's the time. But they'll have more layouts down the road. Um, you can you can do your own blocks, which I think is cool. I would like to see that if you did develop your own blocks, what would be nice is rather than having them saved here, it would be cool is if when the block kits, if I could create my own kit and set it in there and just select it and then go through and select whatever blocks I wanted rather than having this. The only thing, the only other thing that I've asked for is the ability to share them. I think sharing blocks would be amazingly helpful. And that's something that I've pressed Brizzy about and having the ability to share. So anyway, this was just a basic overview. I just wanted to show you guys what's coming. I'm really excited for this. I think that this is cool. I can't wait for it. It's going to be unique. It's going to be fun having another builder that finally has the full theme capacity to customize headers and footers that's something that you know you're always looking for in a theme and brissy has been saying they're going to come out with it and finally we're here it's coming out it's done i've got more updates coming hope you guys have enjoyed this and i will see you guys next time